I'm I'm just a sucker for a good Christmas movie. I love all that sort of stuff. I wait all year for this this time of year. Um, Aren't we all? Aren't we all? <laughs> Um, I was going to begin by asking what, I mean, because I, I watched a movie literally actually this morning. It just got me in a kind of good mood. I went straight after and went to like Starbucks and bought one of those really overpriced lattes. You know, just... The season lattes. Yes. Seasonal latte. I couldn't help myself. Um, yeah, of course. What, I wonder, what You're welcome, you... Starbucks, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. See what we're doing here? See what yeah. we're doing for business? <laughs> uh, I just wonder what you think, because there there's something, there's a kind of formula or something that just makes Christmas movies work. And what some Christmas movies work. What do you think it is what that makes a, a good Christmas movie in your in your eyes? I just think it's the ambiance. I you know, I think it's just setting that kind of warm, fuzzy tone with the Christmas trees and the open fires and the jackets and the mitts and the mugs and the hot cocoa, which we have all of that in this film. Um, I think it just really gets you in that vibe. And like you said, I think you watch the film and, and then you want to do some of the stuff that you see in the film, you know, which is like make yourself a hot chocolate or go out for a, a, a like a cold, crisp walk, especially in London. I shot Aladdin in London, so I got to spend a lot of time in London. And I, you know, Christmas time or the cold weather in London is is I like the cold weather in London better than I like the warm weather, because with warm weather, you often get rain and things like that. But at least when it's cold, it's snowing outside. And, you know, it just kind of makes you want to go out and do all the Christmassy things. Mm. I mean, in the film, you play a chef. Are you much of a cook in real life? Yeah. So, well, I mean, a part of the reason I took this role is for one, I worked at a I worked at a restaurant for three years before I moved to Los Angeles. So I really wanted to get in that vibe. It was something I was familiar with. It was something that I oddly missed a little bit. Um, my girlfriend and I also have a gin company together. So again, perfect for the UK. We do a gin. Uh, it's an Indian dry gin that we make. Um, so in the food and beverage space, I, I, I'm a you know I'm big in that space. I'm you know I, I'm an investor in some restaurants. <clears throat> I wrote a cookbook, uh, if you don't know, called Evolving Vegan, and we just shot the series. So it's a travel food show, kind of like Anthony Bourdain. Uh, you know, we travel around North America. So food is a big, big part of my life. And so this was kind of the perfect role for me uh, to tackle. So what would you say, what's your signature dish then? Is there one that you like, you're really proud of? If you, if you had to host- I, make a, I make a mean tofu pad thai. Uh, I've learned a lot more after we shot Evolving Vegan, the series, but I, I make a mean tofu pad thai. I crisp up the pad thai. You can put it in the air fryer, marinate it with some um, nutritional yeast, soy sauce, a little bit of sriracha, uh, a little bit of peanut butter as well on the side, uh, peanut butter uh, for the sauce. But the tofu, you crisp up in the air fryer and then you got those rice noodles with that peanut butter sauce. It's actually a recipe in my book. So you can check it out. And that's, I think, my go-to. Really easy to make. Um, I tell you what, air fryers have changed the game. They have changed the game. Where did they? <laughs> where, were they where were they when I was growing up? But, but I was going to—I mean, just right. to, tie this, <laughs> to tie this back in to, to Christmas. I mean, because obviously all I want to do now is talk about food. Because I'm quite hungry. But what do you Me eat? Too, man. <laughs> what do you eat on Christmas Day? Because I know there's kind of traditional Christmas Day food and stuff. But every families and different people—they sometimes have their own little unique spin on stuff. I wonder what's the kind of what's a what does what a Christmas Day meal look like in in your house? Well, you know, I, I grew up Egyptian, so our Christmas meal was really, really different. My mom makes an incredible lasagna bechamel with a bechamel sauce, and now she makes it vegan as well after I showed her kind of what to replace the, the heavy cream with and, and the minced meat and stuff. It's so easy to replace that stuff now, uh, but she makes a mean bechamel. I always look forward to that. Uh, with just some, you know, she makes it with big rigatoni pasta. Um, she doesn't make it with like a lasagna pasta with a rigatoni. So I always kind of look forward to that. And then I'm big on, on tofu as well. Um, I can do a really nice tofu, simple tofu, but with a cranberry sauce, kind of like you would, you know, do with a with a turkey or chicken cutlet, but you do with a tofu cutlet instead with some nice gravy and a cranberry sauce. So those are some go-tos. And then of course, drinks wise, um, I make a mean mulled wine. So mulled wine for people who don't know is your standard red wine, but you cook it over the stovetop for hours um, with some orange peel, some cloves, some cinnamon sticks, and it just gives it that really festive uh, flavor. So I gotta say, people are missing out not coming to the Masood household for Christmas. <laughs> I, that's all set. That's all set. 
Yeah, and the best thing about modern <laughs> wine is it makes the whole house smell lovely as well. But um, exactly. <laughs> as with any romantic production like of this nature, of course, it requires kind of chemistry between the two romantic leads. I was wondering, had you met had you met Madeline before, and how do two actors seek to create chemistry <laughs> when they when they first meet? Is it coming rehearsals, or what's the kind of process in that regard? Yeah, so you know this. <laughs> This was kind of a perfect uh, match because me and Mads had met on a late night show a couple of years ago. We did a late night show. We were both promoting uh, different projects that we hadn't worked together on. Um, I was promoting uh, a show called uh, Reprisal and she was promoting, I think, Riverdale or another project she had done. She's she works a lot, so I can't remember which which one uh, she was promoting. But we hit it off at the late night, you know, backstage and everything. And, and people can actually go on YouTube and, and check out that interview that we did together. We had some pretty good chemistry there. And I had always kind of thought, oh, I would love to work with her. She seems like a, a great person. She's vegan as well. So we had a lot in common. And lo and behold, a couple of years later, we got to do this film together. And yeah, we just got to know each other a bit more uh, because we had kept in touch throughout those, uh, you know, throughout those years, but not in a not in a, in a real kind of way. Um, and so we got to know each other. We played some billiards together. Um, so, you know, we just kind of bonded over that and, and getting to know each other a little bit more. And um, it kind of worked out perfectly for Chef Luke and Georgia as well, because in the film, they start off the film as best friends in a non-romantic way. So uh, it kind of worked out perfectly that way. So when did you, I'm assuming you didn't film this like at Christmas time. So is it quite, cause that there's <laughs> like you were mentioning before, like there is a certain feeling that comes with Christmas, a comfort, a, a smell. There's a kind of atmosphere that comes. How, was it quite hard to replicate that when, when you shot this, if you weren't shooting during the kind of holiday season? No, well, our director, Ron, and Amazon made it really easy for us. We didn't shoot it during Christmas or winter time, in fact. But we shot at a at a really old hotel, uh, a beautiful old hotel in Ottawa, Canada. Um, and Ottawa, if you know anything about Canada, is beautiful during Christmas time. So what they did was they decked out this whole hotel and made it seem like it was Christmas inside the hotel. So we were shooting at a, a real old hotel and it was decked out like Christmas. So whenever you stepped in there, people thought it was Christmas. And in fact, they had people staying there, like regular old people staying there, regular old people. We're all regular old people, but regular people, you know, that that weren't actors or part of the production um, staying there. And they thought, you know, they thought something was going on because it was decked out to, to look like Christmas. Uh, so, they, you know, that made it really easy for us. Uh, you know, just just decking out a real hotel to look like Christmas made it pretty easy. Yeah, it means you had Christmas twice that year as well, which is never a bad thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I heard I had Christmas earlier this year already, and now I'm doing it again. It's great. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, you mentioned, obviously, uh, earlier on about like, when you're in London, obviously promoting Aladdin and stuff. I was at the junket that day, but I interviewed, I interviewed Guy Ritchie uh, at that press junket. Our past didn't meet, yeah. anything, but actors often look back over certain roles that kind of help change or craft their careers. Is, is, is Aladdin that for you? Are you forever kind of grateful to Disney and Guy for taking, taking that punt? Because, I mean, it was a... Well, it's just a huge role, isn't it? To play Aladdin. Yeah. 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 Listen, there's certain roles in your career that people will always kind of remember you by and that, you know, have a special place in your heart. And Aladdin has a special place in my heart even before I did the film. Right. So to me, it was it was something that I grew up with. Um, and I talked a, a lot about this on the tour, but it was the only animation film, Disney animation film that spoke to me on a personal level because it was Aladdin. He was brown like me and I, and I was a brown kid growing up. So it always have a special place in my heart for that reason. But other roles will will happen and, and they'll have special places in my heart for, for other reasons. Um, you know, I'm sure me and Mads are going to work together on, on something else in the future because I think we really enjoyed working together. And so this film will have a really special place in my heart because it'll be the first time that I worked with Madeleine um and, and works with freebie as well so um i think every role you do kind of picks a different box and and for me this kind of ticked a lot of boxes as well so i'm excited for people to watch this and it's free people don't watch it for free and you don't even have to sign up for anything you just click a couple of buttons and and we're getting you in the christmas spirit
Mm. Yeah, you mentioned about wanting to wear Mads again one day. I mean, she, um, I'm calling her Mads now. I've ne- mm-hmm. never met her, but um, you. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You, you, can, yeah, just, you won't be mad. You won't yeah. be mad. It's all um, <laughs> But uh, these, because sometimes these films, you know, when they, maybe when they're well received, you have to kind of wait to see how they kind of go down or, or and, and stuff like that. But when you find two characters that you like being in the company of, like we do in this movie, they do lend themselves to sequels and other movies. Is that something you'd be open to, to revisiting? These characters, because romantic stories always have scope to to be explored so much further, I think, because of things that can go right yeah. and wrong in the future. Yeah, and it's a Christmas movie, right? Who doesn't like a Christmas movie sequel? Um, yeah, it's definitely something I'd be open to. I loved playing Chef Luke. I really did. I mean, I hope that when people watch it, they fall in love with him. But I fell in love with him, too. Um, just, you know, reading him off the page, how, how genuine he was. Chef Luke, you know, incredibly genuine, focused on his work. And that's something that I found really sexy, too, with these two characters. Um, you know, when when we throw out around that world, word, we often think something else. But what I found kind of really attractive about these two characters and their dynamic is how career focused they both were. Um, and they kind of helped support each other. Uh, you know, it was it, there's certain scenes where it kind of reminds you of, of a husband and wife coming home from work and venting, even though that doesn't happen in this film. Um, but, you know, kind of gives you that kind of feeling of, of maturity as well um, and career driven, helping each other focus, helping each other become better people. So I enjoyed that and, and would love to explore that more with with these two characters. Yeah, and just very finally on the subject of sequels, I'm not going to say anything because I know you can't with Aladdin two. I know there's so much that <laughs> nothing will be allowed to sort of be said. But but I just wondered about because obviously the first film had this kind of obligation to fulfill fulfill the same story we all knew and loved that I loved as a kid that you loved as a kid. So come with that kind of comes pressure and responsibility. Is it quite freeing? Is there a sense of like freedom going into a sequel where you can kind of take it your own way a little bit and have and then and, and in turn have maybe less comparisons made and have that kind of I don't know yes yeah, slightly more freedom to see where you can take it yeah yeah it's a different it's a different challenge right for sure I mean um doing something that's pre-existing whether it's Aladdin or a biopic which I hope to do one day um that has its own challenges you know because you don't want to let people down you don't want to disappoint people people have a of a, a preconceived notion of how it is and especially with an animation it's like it'll never be exactly the same because it's an animation it's it's not a, it's not a live action real person um and getting to do something like hotel for the holidays playing chef luke who's you know completely original character i can kind of start from scratch blank canvas and kind of do whatever I want with him so that's freeing in a way as well and I think that's important for a Christmas film you know because you don't want it to to feel derived in any way but I think you know long story short both have their own challenges and and um, I enjoy doing both uh, and I think for a Christmas movie you know this it's it's important to kind of feel free to do what you want with the character and just say finally before I do go you mentioned about wanting to do a biopic one day have you got anyone in mind that you'd like to play Oh man, I'd love to play Prince one day. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I think playing Prince would be really cool. Um, that would be, that would be awesome if that could work out somehow. Uh, but I'd love to also play, you know, Egyptian greats like Omar Sharif, uh, is, is an Egyptian great, uh, Abdel Halim, uh, there's so many, you know, greats from, from the region, um, uh, from North Africa and the Middle East. Um, I'd love to play all those kinds of characters. For a while, I, I was, you know, kind of in talks to play Sheikh Zayed, um, who obviously founded the UAE. He, he's the godfather of the United Arab Emirates. So I'd love to play someone like him. I just think the region uh, of North Africa and the Middle East, that's something that my production company focuses on, Press Play Productions. We've got a few uh, productions lined up that are going to come out soon and we always focus on North Africa and the Middle East and and you know telling those stories because they're not often told but at such incredible rich history right from ancient Egypt to the formation of the United Arab Emirates um, you know to all the presidents of Egypt we've got some incredible stories so uh, you know th- there's a lot to a lot to dig into there. Well, maybe I'll pass across again one day in one of those projects, or maybe just to, if I've ever tried one of your recipes in your cookbook. <laughs> yeah, and check out Evolving Vegan, you know, the cookbook, yeah. but we also just shot it into a series. It's, uh, like I said, going to be a, a travel food show. So definitely check it out.
You know, there's nothing I like more than travel food shows. That is literally my two favorite things combined. Right? Um, Christmas you know, movies and travel food shows. Come on, man. I'm giving yeah. the people what they want. You, you are a real crowd pleaser. Thank you so much for your time today, man. Have a nice weekend. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Devin. Right. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, hey You Guys.